everyone. Today we are going to analyze the poem On Turning Ten by Billy Collins. On Turning Ten by Billy Collins. The whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something, something worse than any stomach ache or the headaches I get from reading in bad light, a kind of measles of the spirit, a mumps of the psyche, a disfiguring chickenpox of the soul. You tell me it's too early to be looking back, but that is because you have forgotten the perfect simplicity of being one and the beautiful complexity introduced by two. But I can lie on my bed and remember every digit. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I could make myself invisible by drinking a glass of milk a certain way. At seven, I was a soldier. At nine, a prince. But now I am mostly at the window watching the late afternoon light. Back then it fell, it never fell so solemnly against the side of my tree house. And my bicycle never leaned against the garage as it does today all the dark blue speed drained out of it. This is the beginning of sadness, I say to myself, as I walk through the universe in my sneakers. It is time to say goodbye to my imaginary friends, time to turn the first big number. It seems only yesterday I used to believe there was nothing under my skin but light. If you cut me, I could shine. But now, when I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees, I bleed. So that was On Turning Ten by Billy Collins. Today we are going to define our four poetic literary devices. We will read On Turning Ten several times. We will annotate On Turning Ten for the examples of the four literary devices. And then on your own, you will finish annotating On Turning Ten in your packet, which is on page 63. You will answer the connection questions and you will post those on the Schoology discussion and you will write and annotate your own on turning 10 style poem. So the first vocabulary word we are going to define is stanza and your vocabulary words are on page 107 and 108 in your packet. So you want to turn to your packet and write down these definitions on that page. And our first definition is a group of lines forming the basic recurring metrical unit in a poem, a verse, a group of four or more lines in a poem. Um, so that's the definition for stanza. When you write it down, I would put a comma after poem, after verse, uh, just to make it more clear. So pause the video now and write this definition into your packet. As we look at stanzas, we see that On Turning Ten has one, two, three, four, five stanzas. And we can tell that they are stanzas because each stanza um, is separated with a line break. So the author skipped a line between each stanza. In order to be able to understand stanzas a little better, we also need to know the definition of a line. A line of poetry is one single line. So if we look at the whole idea of it makes me feel, that is one line of poetry. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven lines in the first stanza. And then you see a line break. And then you see, you tell me it is too early to be looking back. And this stanza has nine lines. The third stanza has seven lines. The fourth stanza has four lines. And the fifth stanza has five lines. So in this poem, there are five stanzas. And we can tell that there are stanzas because there is a skipped line between each of the stanzas. And each of the stanzas has a different number of lines. The first stanza has seven lines, the second nine, the third seven, the fourth four, and the fifth five lines. Our next definition is enjambment. Enjambment is the running over of a sentence from one verse or couplet into another so that 
closely related words fall in different lines. And when we look at on turning 10, the very first stanza is actually one sentence. And that sentence is, the whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something, something worse than any stomach ache or the headaches I get from reading in bad lights, a kind of measles of the spirit, a mumps of the psyche, a disfiguration, uh, I'm sorry, a disfiguring chickenpox of the soul. So if we were to practice enjambment with this particular stanza that is now a sentence instead of a stanza, what we need to think about are what ideas um, is the author trying to confer to the reader about turning 10 through this sentence. And once we're able to figure out the ideas, then we may be able to figure out the best way to break this sentence into lines in a poem. So when I look at this particular one, I see the whole idea of it makes me feel. This is one idea, the idea of something. It happens to be the 10th birthday. A second idea is like I'm coming down with something. The third idea, something worse than any stomach ache. This is a third idea because we have in the first idea how this birthday is making me feel. I'm coming down with something. That something is worse than a stomach ache. The fourth idea is that it's worse than headaches I get from reading in bad light. The fourth idea is it's a kind of measles of the spirit. The sixth is mumps of the psyche. And the final idea about this birthday and how it makes me feel is a disfiguring chicken pox of the soul. So if I were to break this out into lines in a poem, I would break it out according to ideas. The whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something, something worse than any stomach ache or the headache I get from reading in bad light, a kind of measles of the spirit, a mumps of the psyche, a disfiguring chicken pox of the soul. So every single one of the ideas seems to get worse as we go along. This is what enjambment is, taking a sentence and figuring out the best place to break it into a line of poetry based on, in this instance, ideas. I want you to practice this with the second stanza. Don't look in the book, in the packet I mean. Don't um, refer to it. Just pause the video and think about where are the ideas and then how would you break this? It's, let's see, it's three, four, five or six sentences into a line of poetry. So go ahead and pause your video now and try this out. All right, I hope you really tried it. So you tell me it is too early to be looking back is one idea. You have forgotten is another idea. Um, being one was simple is the, is the third idea. Being two was more complex is the fourth idea. I can lie on my bed is another idea. Remember every digit, that's the next idea. Lying on the bed and remembering birthdays um, are two different ideas. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I could make myself invisible. Uh, the other idea is by drinking a glass of milk a certain way. At seven, I was a soldier. At nine, a prince. So <clears throat> one thing to think about is you don't want to go too crazy with enjambment. You don't necessarily have to have every single idea um, on its own line. And uh, the author of On Turning 10, Billy Collins, didn't put every single idea on its own line. He combined the idea, but I can lie in my bed and remember every digit. And he combined, at seven I was a soldier, at nine a prince. And so the enjambment of the second stanza looks like this. 
you tell me it is too early to be looking back, but that is because you have forgotten the perfect simplicity of being one. So the reason we have forgotten is the last word of this particular line is so that um, it really puts emphasis. The reader has forgotten. And then the next ideas are what the reader has forgotten. The reader has forgotten the perfect simplicity of being one and the beautiful complexity introduced by two. But I can lie on my bed and remember every digit. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I don't know that this author thought it was very important to um, have enjambment after the word bed because it's not, we don't want to spend a lot of focus on the fact that the speaker of the poem, the voice of the poem is lying on the bed and we don't want to spend a lot of time with the speaker of the poem remembering every digit. Those two ideas um, combined there together make more sense than separating them as far as the emphasis that separating those two lines would, those two ideas would produce. So, but I can lie on my bed and remember every digit. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I could make myself invisible by drinking a glass of milk a certain way. At seven, I was a soldier at nine a prince. And here we have the same idea. It's not necessary to start at nine a prince on a new line because it's the same um, sort of thought. He's going through his memories of when he was younger. So you'll take a look at the rest of the poem and really think about why Billy Collins chose to put the line breaks where he put them because your job will be to figure out where to put the line breaks where you put them in your own poem. And deciding where those line breaks go is called enjambment. So our fourth or third um, definition here is metaphor. And we already worked with metaphor with two names, two worlds. So I'm just gonna um, review this. It's a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. What you are doing with metaphor is comparing two unlike things. Um, and so when we look at metaphor in On Turning 10, we see a couple down at the bottom. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. At seven, I was a soldier. At nine, a prince. This, the speaker of this poem was not literally an Arabian wizard. The speaker of the poem is comparing um, him or herself to an Arabian wizard at the age of four. So what this is a metaphor for is, um, he's comparing his age, and I said he, because this, the poet is male, but it easily could be she. He's comparing his age to heroic characters. So that is what is being um, compared there with, with the metaphor um, that's being used. The interesting aspect of this next piece is that this whole first stanza, the whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something, something worse than any stomach ache or the headaches I get from reading in bad light, the kind of measles of the spirit, a mumps of the psyche, and disfiguring chickenpox of the soul. This whole stanza is a metaphor for the speaker's 10th birthday. So sometimes single lines of poetry, like at four I was an Arabian wizard, um, are a metaphor, and other times an entire stanza or an entire poem can be a metaphor. So this metaphor is um, for how it feels to turn 10. It's sick making. Our last literary device um, is a volta or a turn. So the Italian word for turn is volta and the volta is the turn of thought or argument. And this is where the author with, will change ideas or the tone in the poem. Pause the video and take a minute and write this definition down in your packet on page 108.
All right. So in order to know where the volta is, and usually it happens in the last half of the poem, um, you have to really analyze the whole entire poem. And one thing I did with this particular poem was look at the verb tense. So we have present tense. We have makes me feel, I'm coming down, I get, you tell me, but I can lie on my bed, but now I am watching as it does today. This is, I say, I walk to say, and it seems. So these are all present tense verbs. This is happening to the author right now, but there's also an interesting use of past tense verbs here, and it's very much on purpose. The author did not use past tense verbs because he didn't know what else to do or because he made mistakes. So the past tense verbs are you have forgotten, I was, I could make, I was. Back then it never fell, never leaned against, drained out. So those are all of the past tense verbs. And the author does one more interesting thing. The author speaks in conditional future tense. If you cut me, I could shine. So this hasn't happened yet, and it might not happen. But those are very interesting things that are happening with the verb tense. The volta or turn starts in the final stanza. Um, oh, and but now, but now, now we're back to future, future tense, present tense, I mean, present tense. But now when I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees, I bleed. So the volta happens, it starts to happen when the final stanza, where we get back to more of a reflective tone it seems only yesterday, I used to believe there was nothing under my skin but light. If you cut me, I could shine. And then the turn really happens with this part here. But now when I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees, I bleed. So verb tense helped me figure out the volta of this, but also the word choice did as well. Um, if you think about the comparisons that this author has made, he has used mostly fairy tale comparisons. Um, an Arabian wizard, a glass, I'm sorry, a soldier, a prince, um, and magical comparisons. My bicycle never leaned against the garage as it did today, all the dark blue speed drained out of it. Um, and then he has some really great hyperbole. I walk through the universe in my sneakers. We have some amazing things here that are lending themselves well to otherworldly experiences. But then um, he goes right back into uh, reality. When he said, it seemed that there was nothing underneath my skin but light, that's another fairy tale sort of um, image. But the turn really happens when he says, but now when I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees, I bleed. That actually happens. When you fall on a sidewalk, you will most likely skin your knees, you will most likely bleed. And that is why the final two lines of this poem are the volta. And if I were to annotate this, I would um, put a bracket around it and then write Volta next to it and then be able to explain why this is the Volta, much in the way that I've explained it to you. So now we have this poem that we've really analyzed. I'm going to read it one more time on turning 10. The whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something, something worse than any stomach ache or the headaches I get from reading in bad light, a kind of measles of the spirit a mumps of the psyche, a disfiguring chickenpox of the soul. You tell me it is too early to be looking back, but that is because you have forgotten the perfect simplicity of being one and the beautiful complexity introduced by two. But I can lie on my bed and remember every digit. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I can make myself invisible by drinking a glass of milk a certain way. At seven, I was a soldier. At nine, a prince. 
but now I am mostly at the window watching the late afternoon light. But then it never fell so solemnly against the side of my tree house, and my bicycle never leaned against the garage as it does today, all the dark blue speed drained out of it. This is the beginning of sadness, I say to myself as I walk through the universe in my sneakers. It is time to say goodbye to my imaginary friends, time to turn the first big number. It seems only yesterday I used to believe there was nothing under my skin but light. If you cut me, I could shine. But now when I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees, I bleed. When you write your own On Turning Ten style poem, which um, is the format for this, is on page 69 and 70 in your packet, you will start each stanza uh, with the highlighted words. The whole idea of it makes me feel. Stanza two begins, you tell me it is two. Stanza three begins, but now I am mostly. Stanza four begins, this is the beginning of. And stanza five begins, it seems like only yesterday. And you will need to include stanza, volta, metaphor, and enjambment in your poem. And you will need to annotate a second copy of your poem for those literary devices so that your English teachers can see them. So today we defined our four poetic literary devices. We read on turning 10 and we annotated on turning 10 for some examples of those four devices. And now on your own, you will finish annotating on turning 10. You will answer the connection question and post um, the, the answer to the Schoology discussion. And you will write and annotate your own on turning 10 style poem. If you have questions about any of this, please talk with your language arts teacher.